Recently, Serbia unveiled their latest tank modernization project named M84 AS3, a further improvement of the M84 modernization we have been seeing for quite some time now. Not only that, they also showcased their modernization of the BTR-80A APCs they recently acquired, which we will also talk about in this video. Now, I got to see these vehicles firsthand. I even got to look around the interior of the new BTR, but taking pictures and videos was obviously not allowed. But I will try to give you as much detail as I can. First, let's start with what I think most people will find most interesting, the new M84 AS3. The first and the most noticeable difference when compared to its predecessors, M84 AS1 and AS2, is the presence of the Hardkill Active Protection System. If you would assume that the system in question is the GL6, you would be correct. Why GL6? Well, it is not the final product. You see, Serbia is currently trying out several systems and this GL6 is just a placeholder for now until they come to the final decision. I was told that the decision will be made between several systems, out of which the most notable ones are Israeli Iron Fist and the Chinese GL6, that they will see which one is the most affordable and easiest to integrate into the new vehicle and will then make the final decision on which system to adopt. So, while for now we see the GL6, it might not be present on the final iteration of the vehicle. Therefore, I will not go much into the details on its performance. All you need to know for now is that it's a hard kill active protection system is planned to be installed on the tank. Next notable thing is the presence of the integrated drone jammer. They did not want to tell me the details about it unfortunately, so that's all we know for now. If you were paying attention to the visuals I have been showing, you probably noticed something unusual about the rear of the turret and the rear of the hull. First of all, the turret, now, just like the Russian T-90M, has a separate ammunition container placed on the back of the turret for the ammunition that is not placed inside the outloader and would be scattered around the tank, which decreases the chances of the ammunition getting hit and therefore less chances of a cook-off or detonation. The explosive reactive armor is also placed around it to actually try and protect this external ammunition. The rubber screens hanging from this ERA are most likely there to decrease the chances of drones striking the engine deck of the tank. I say most likely because I actually forgot to ask about it. Sorry. The boxes placed on the back of the tank are meant for the APU. I say this because there is actually nothing inside them right now. They are there, so once the APUs are delivered, they can place them there. But at the time of making this video, there is no actual APU on the tank. But it is very much planned, otherwise they wouldn't have made those armored boxes for no reason. Now, if we look at the diagram image of the tank, we will notice that the rear of the tank is meant to have ERA, just like we have seen on some Russian tanks in the past few years. This, for those that don't know, is a much cheaper and obviously inferior way to increase the survivability of those tanks because of their poor reverse speed. So instead of increasing the reverse speed so tanks don't have to turn around to retreat, which would require changes to the transmission, they just place ERA on the back in hopes to increase the survivability against rocket launchers and maybe some ATGMs. On this tank, it looks extra weird because of the added length from the APUs, which on the Russian tanks is either not present at all, or is placed on the left side of the hull like on the T-90M, so there is no additional length on the back. Another change that you might have noticed is that the tank no longer has cage armor protecting the sides of the engine deck. Instead, the ERA now covers the entire side armor of the vehicle. Everything else about the tank, other than also the lack of the shield around the quaxial machine gun, seems to be the same. The gunner has access to thermal, commander has a remote weapon station, etc. One dissatisfaction that seems to be common among people I've spoken with about this tank is the mobility. There is no change to the engine power of the tank, and depending on which tank is upgraded, either M84 or M84A, you're either getting the 840 horsepower engine or a 1000 horsepower engine, and the weight is drastically increased because of the all extra stuff added on top, especially the ERA and now the active protection system. Of course, the 1000 horsepower variant is okay, but everyone says that even that is not really enough, that the tank should receive a new engine which would bring the mobility to that of the regular M84A with the 1000 horsepower engine. There are some rumors about improvements, but I wouldn't really trust those for now, to be honest. The tank did receive new improved tracks with a 4000 km lifespan, which is pretty decent, but nothing about the actual mobility has been changed. As for the BTR, well, there have been a lot of interesting upgrades. I don't know how many of you know, but the BTR-80A does not have a stabilized gun. Only the newer BTR-82A does. 
So one of the important upgrades of the BTR-80A is the installation of the gun stabilization system. So this Serbian upgraded BTR-80A does have a stabilized gun. There is also the presence of the gun shield, which I imagine is there to improve accuracy, which has been proven with the Russian 30mm guns. The protection has been improved to all around 12.7mm or fitted BMG protection with the additional steel plates. The vehicle still retains its amphibious capabilities thanks to the sponge-like material added in between the base armor and the additional plates. I was also told that they are yet to test the protection against bigger calibers. They tested it against 12.7mm before the amphibious tests and were afraid to shoot it with anything larger, and they said that they soon will test to see if the extra armor will stop anything bigger, like a 20mm. Well, nevertheless, all around 12.7mm protection is a big upgrade for the BTR, not because of the actual heavy machine gun fire, but because of the artillery fragmentation. Basic BTR with its 7.62mm protection can get absolutely shredded by close artillery fragments. This improved protection can actually help it a lot to withstand such threats. Another improvement in the survivability is again the integrated drone jammer, for which we also don't have any details. The fire control system is also completely new, with the thermal imaging system and new electronics. This is a big upgrade for this vehicle actually. Together with the fully stabilized gun, improved accuracy and the thermal sight, the firepower has been drastically increased. The commander has access to a big monitor with a battle management system and the ability to see the thermal imager from the turret on his screen as well. The driver also has a new dashboard with a monitor which has cameras for the front and the rear driving. Overall, this is a massive improvement over the base BTR-80A. There isn't that much that has been done in retrospect, but all of this is very important, and I quite like the changes they made. But we will see if all the BTRs will be upgraded to the standard or if they will change something before they begin the modernization. What I'm mostly interested in though is what will happen with the tank. We have seen them remove things that were originally planned to be installed, like the CATV from the M84 AS2, which has been removed somewhere down the line and the tank stopped being presented with it, which of course carried over to the M84 AS3 now there is no actual CITV. When the change happened, I asked one tank commander if the remote weapon station has the thermal integrated in it by any chance, and he told me that it does not, that it has day and night channels but not actual thermals. And it makes sense, the box holding the optics does not seem large enough to house modern cold thermals. That means that despite all its modern features, the only thermal present to the tank is probably the one housed in the main gun sight. I hope the modernization project will be finalized soon and we will actually get to see the actual finished tank and finally have some concrete information about some components. That would be all. If you like my content you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.